Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Serena and in today's video we're going to be sewing up a pattern that I've been wanting to use for the longest time but I couldn't find the perfect fabric to go with it so now it's time to tackle this pattern and I'm super excited to share the process with you guys. I hope it turns out as good as I've been imagining it would for the last couple of years. So if you're interested in checking out this video and watching me sew up this dress go ahead and like and subscribe and let's get to the pattern and the fabric. For today's pattern, we're going to be sewing up Simplicity 1773 in a size 13 bust 33. This is a dress with a faux bolero and it comes in two styles, view 2 with the wide rolled collar and view 1 with longer sleeves and a high collared neck. On the back we have the fabric requirements, the suggested fabric types, the pattern pieces, as well as the back of the garments. The pattern is from 1956 and I'll be creating view 2, it's the short sleeve version with the rolled neckline and a bow located at the bolero in the front as well as the back of the rolled collar. For the fabric I'm using this green suiting material that I picked up in Guyana and also showed in my fabric haul at either the end of last year or the first haul of this year. So I will link that video, check it out if you have some time. Jumping right in, I decided to interline this material because it's very floppy and I knew that I wanted the at least the midsection area to be nice and structured. This is a sheath dress and I wanted it to be fitted and I felt like the fabric needed some stabilizing. I tried to use this fabric for another dress and the bodice came out kind of wonky so I scrapped that before I got too far and then realized that I would probably need to interline this material if I wanted to make anything nice and not have to worry about like the fabric distorting if that makes any sense. So I had some cotton that has been in my stash for a really long time and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with it. I don't even know why I bought it in the first place. So this became the perfect piece to interline with. I do like the print of it and I think it'd be a cute little pop on the inside of the fabric. I did notice shortly after interlining that you can see the print directly through. So what I did was I basically interlined to the point my slip stopped so as long as I'm wearing a slip underneath it you can't see the flowers which means everything that's below my slip was going to be not interlined so that's why you can see that it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. Um, in the end I tried on you can't see the print through so if you are going to interline fabric choose a solid. I don't have solids in my collection so I had to work with what I have. Another benefit to interlining this fabric with cotton is that the fabric itself is not natural fiber so it feels good against my body to have the cotton so I really appreciate that and I think in the future I should probably start getting random cuts of solid cotton or white or a tan color or even keeping muslin around more often to help deal with this. Working with prints is fine, especially if you're working with dark fabrics. So in order to make sure you can't see it through a light colored fabric, hold it up to the light inside. And if you can see the print through the fabric, then you should probably switch fabric or do something like I did, which is only put the interlining up until the point where your slip is. Uh, because if you can see it inside with your light bulb, then you definitely will see it outside when the sun shines. Once you interline the pieces, you've done two things. One, you've lined it to some degree, and also it counts as a stay stitching. I did find some white fabric, so I used that on the bolero since that's going to go over the upper part of the sheath dress anyway, so it's going to be extra layered. And I just wanted to be very careful that you wouldn't be able to see the printed fabric both underneath or through, so I found some star printed fabric I think it's some fabric that my son picked for his little mini stash and I used a tiny bit of it to do that because I ordered more than he could possibly need once everything's interlined then you take it back over to your table and now you mark you mark all of your darts and things because at this point you are treating it as though it's one piece once the darts are marked I pin them and take them over to the machine to sew them up I am so excited to finally be working on this dress. I've had it for quite some time and I really wanted to have this in a tweed but I couldn't find any and I've had it for so long that I felt like it was just time to make it regardless. Because it's doubled up so you have the full sheath dress and then the bolero, the faux bolero sits on top of it. You do want to work with a relatively thin to medium weight fabric. You want it to be not too thin because you want it to hold its shape which is why I interlined this fabric 
but you don't want it too thick because you do have to double up on the front bodice of it. So with it being tweed, I have to find the right thickness of tweed to really make this work. I have been really busy in the last two weeks, mainly just being a mom and really trying to get out and take advantage of the warm weather. So technically this dress should have been done last week. You guys should have had this video last week, but it took me a little while longer. Um, and another reason it took me a while is I was taking my time because this is the first time that I'm making it, but I didn't want it to count as a muslin. And the pattern itself was not in the best condition. The original owner did cut on the pattern, which isn't usually an issue for me personally I know a lot of people would prefer that you didn't I don't mind it as long as you put the pieces back in the envelope and I have access to them but this person did not do a very good job of cutting on the lines so things were a little bit wonky it was also missing the sleeves so then I had to make new sleeves for this pattern um, so all of that extra took more time than I anticipated. Also, because I interlined it, that also took up time. So I think if I make this again and I choose my fabric better, I won't have to interline it. And because I've made it once before, I'm already prepared for where I should be cutting on this pattern. I'm currently attaching the band that is on the front of the bolero that leads to the back. This is interfaced. It's cut on the bias, but it's also interfaced. So it's really important that you do not interface all the way to the edge of the piece. Basically, you're gonna leave the interfacing within the seam allowance. If you use an iron-on interfacing, that's simple. You just trace it and iron it on. But if you do a sew-on interfacing, then you're going to want to hand baste it within the seam allowance. And the reason for this is because it's cut on the bias, it needs to stretch so it doesn't wrinkle. So if you interface all the way to the edge, then it will not stretch and that defeats the purpose. So be very careful with that, both on the band as well as the collar. Make sure that you add your interfacing within the seam allowance and don't go past it. Once the bolero front is complete and the band is attached, it's time to baste it to the front of the dress, right side to wrong side of the bolero front. Because this is a sheath dress and it's known to be fitted, you're going to need some room in the skirt to be able to walk and move your legs properly. So it does have a back vent and that vent is put together with a separate panel. Usually that's built into the design of the skirt. So there's like a little tab already attached to the skirt. In this case, it's not the tab is separate and you kind of have to sew it together to be able to bring the back pieces of the dress together so that's what I'm doing here it's really simple while I do that let's talk about seam finishes because as you can tell this suiting material frays pretty badly and so does cotton so I use the combination of pinking shears French seams and serging if you're wondering why I went with so many different finishes is I basically chose a finish that I felt would suit different areas better this is an interlined piece with an overlapping bolero so I knew that thickness and bulkiness could happen and so I chose a seam finish for a seam depending on how bulky the seam was. So I prefer French seams so I went with that for the side seams which are the longest seams that we have on this piece. And for the shoulder seams, I use the serger because it does cut down on some of the bulk and it was going to be the least obvious like the shoulder seams they're not that big a deal and you don't really see them straight away. I used a lace hem tape for the hem on the bottom as well as the hem of the sleeves and then I also surged around the armhole so that way I could cut away some of that bulk while I was sewing. Now that the front and the back of the dress have been put together, it's time to bring them together at the shoulder seams and I just do a standard 5 8 seam allowance and then I press it open and I decided not to do a French seam here simply because it was interlined at the shoulder and I felt like it would be a lot smoother especially since I also have to add a collar that would have added more bulk like a rolled collar it just would have been too much going on up there so it was best for me to leave that seam open and just serge them instead. Now I am finishing up the French seam on the side seam. I almost interlocked or overstitched this by hand or did a cover stitch by hand but then I decided against it because I was just like uh I would have to make the stitches really small it's already taken me two weeks to get to this point 
and it would have just prolonged the entire process and I am very impatient so I would have started off really small stitches and then they would have been super wide and frayed out anyway so I decided to do the French seam. At this point I am adding the collar to the dress and then I understitch it. This is not put into the instructions. This is assumed knowledge. So I highly recommend that you understitch this collar. It's going to be really important than a standard collar because this is a very open wide neck. So if you don't understitch it, it will be very obvious. So understitch now so you don't look sloppy later. Now I am working on the bow to adorn both the front and the back of this dress. If you've made it this far, please consider liking this video, subscribing, and leaving me a little comment down below to let me know what you think about the style or if you have any questions, I'd love to hear it. It would really help push this video through to the algorithm, especially since I haven't posted in a while. Now I am top stitching the free ends of the band that's attached to the bolero on the back so that way it looks like one continuous band across the back. I'm basically stitching on the underside and then I flip it over and press and this is the final look. I love it. It definitely met my expectations. I love the color. I do love the fabric. It makes me very very happy. This outfit is better suited for an updo so you can really see the neckline as well as the bow in the back but I really wanted to get this video out and I did not have time to like wash and style my hair so I hope you enjoy it anyway. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to support this channel any further you can leave me a virtual tip over on Ko-fi or become a bobbin over on Patreon. Special thanks to my bobbins and of course the best free way to support me is to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!